So here I'm going to look at the parallel line rules. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind with parallel lines is that we will abbreviate them just by drawing two straight lines. And parallel lines, of course, if you remember, are lines that um, will never, never, ever inter intersect. The distance between them will be the same forever. And we indicate that on the diagram by showing that little arrow. So lines that have matching little arrows on them will be parallel. Um, and you can have a situation, something like this, two angles parallel in that direction. Maybe you've got another set of angles that are parallel vertically, so I'll double those angles. So these match, they're parallel, and these match, they're parallel. But those two sets are not parallel to each other, because obviously they intersect. Okay. So, um, our rules here are for corresponding angles on a parallel line, on parallel lines are equal. So corresponding, if you think about what that word means, it means kind of the same. So same location, same situation. And for parallel lines, sometimes I think about chopping it in half. If you're going to chop that um, diagram in half, this whole piece here should look very similar to this whole piece here, and if you pick it up and put it on top of the other, you'll get 100 degrees right where the X is, because they're corresponding. So another way that the diagrams sometimes work for us is if you highlight yourself here, what we end up with is that the two parts of the F have to be on the parallel lines, and then the angles that we're looking for and the angle that we want make up kind of like the elbows in the F. So corresponding lines are sometimes called um, F angles, but in the exam if you try and say F angle is your reason, you won't get credit for it. You need to know that it's corresponding lines, and you can of course abbreviate it. So in this situation, X is equal to 100 degrees. Our next rule it's going to be alternate angles, so alternate kind of meaning the opposites, I guess, if you will. All angles equal on a parallel line. These will also be equal angles, but if you try to draw a shape here, a letter that kind of sums these together, again, the parallel bits here, but I can see that this one is kind of on the top, and this one here is on the bottom of that line that they're split between. So these are what we call alternate angles. And so x is equal to 50 because it's the same. And the shape that we often use for all angles is thinking about looking for z shapes, where the parallel lines and then the two pieces that come together make that z, versus the f shape, where they're kind of both below the line. Z is one's below, one's above. And so they're alternate of each other. Co interior angles, um, co int angles. Again, if you try to highlight between the parallel line and the angles we're looking at here, we can see that they kind of um, are co-interior because they're co meaning both and interior meaning inside. They're both inside this kind of location, so they share this space. They're both above this transverse line and they're both between the parallel line, so they're co-interior, they share the same space. And these guys are not equal, but they add 180, so x here is going to be equal to 180 minus 120 x will be equal to 60 degrees. And here our straight lines are like so, and we sometimes refer to these guys as U angles. Or some people see them as C angles if you visualize them sideways. A strategy for you on problems like this is don't be afraid to turn the diagram around because sometimes it's easier to see them one way or the other. You might have a diagram that makes an upside down F that you might not recognize when it's upside down, but if you flip it over you'll recognize it. And same with a Z angle. It might be a vertical situation like this, but if you flip it around or rotate the picture you might recognize a Z. Z, sorry. So a few examples of these. Let's take a look. Um, this is C up here. So I'm looking for angle P. I've got two parallel lines. I notice that because of my little arrows here. And there's two angles that have been given to me. So a couple of ways that I might be able to do this, um, it's one of the situations in angle geometry where I'll have to solve for stuff that they're not asking me for to, or for yet. So one way that I could look at doing this is I could do angles on a straight line and find this angle, and angles on a straight line and find this angle, and then I would have angles in a triangle add up to 180. That would work. Uh, but I'm going to use another strategy just to show off the parallel line rules. So first thing I'm going to look at here 
is that I've got um, co-interior angles in this situation. So we'll call this um, angle A, B, E, because it goes from point A to B to E, is equal to 180 minus 135. And that's going to be 45 degrees. And my reason for this would be co int angle equal 180. They add to 180. So I know that this is 45 degrees. And if I take a look on the other side, I have another set of co interior angles. So here I can find angle CBF is equal to 180 minus 115 and that's going to get us to um, 65 degrees so again co int angle equal 180 on parallel lines so I should have that up there And so I know that this one's going to be 65, so the last thing that I might think then is that angles on a straight line add up to 180, so P in this case will be 180 minus 45 minus 65. It's going to be equal to 45 and 65 give me 110, so equal to 70 degrees, and my reason would be angles on straight line equal 180. And again, there will be other ways to do that particular problem, but you just have to take a look and see what works for you. Looking at one more example here, I notice again that I have parallel lines. And I'm trying to figure out angle X. So, thinking about my rules, I know that 140 is going to be a co-interior angle with this space here because it's kind of making an upside down F and they're both going to share that same space so here I could say angle in OD angle in OD is equal to 140 because um, corresponding on parallel lines are equal and once that's 140 I can see here then that I've got angles on a straight line I can use. So x is going to be equal to 140 minus, um, sorry, 180 minus 140 is equal to 40 degrees. Angles on straight line equal 180 degrees. So there's always a few ways to pull these pictures together and pull the diagrams together. Um, but again, a couple of hints that I can give you for problem solving would be to cover things up with your hands. Uh, rotate the pictures left and right, upside down, see if you can see things better in a different orientation. It can help quite a bit sometimes.